So let's start with a fun fact. I'm sure most of you have heard that Wi-Fi is the short term for wireless fidelity, which sounds like a technically right thing. But the thing is actually wrong. Wi-Fi doesn't stand for anything. Wi-Fi was actually an easier name given to the original wireless protocol 802.11. Imagine telling your friend, I want to connect to your 802.11. That name certainly wouldn't have caught on. And so somebody thought it wise to call the wireless protocol Wi-Fi because it sounds like Hi-Fi. I know, it sounds dumb, but that's actually the truth. Today we're going to talk about Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and NFC. I'm Michelle Manuel and welcome to Tech Here. First off, let's start with Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi as we know it today was actually a combination of different technologies combined together. In all the day, they thought it was a very good way of having to transfer information wirelessly as we know it today, Wi-Fi. But then I want to credit some two people today. First off is Heidi Lamar. Now she was the person who came up with the frequency hopping as a wireless protocol which is used even today in Wi-Fi. So in the past when there used to be wars and they used to send torpedoes to submarines, they used to send the torpedoes over radio waves. Now since radio waves could be intercepted, imagine you sent a torpedo to an incoming warship and the people intercepted it and rerouted it to face you. That's actually some Mission Impossible stuff. And Heidi Lama was one of the engineers at one of the parties and she thought it wise to have the torpedo run on different radio frequencies. That's what we know today as frequency hopping. And that's the same thing that is used in Wi-Fi till today. Many years later, a scientist called John O'Sullivan and his team came up with the chip that was had the Wi-Fi protocols embedded in that could transmit and receive Wi-Fi signals. But enough of the history lesson, let's talk about something that's actually useful to you. So if you go to your phone hotspot and you are sharing your hotspot, you realize that it will show you that there are two bands, 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz, and those are the two frequencies that Wi-Fi signals run on. But then there's an advantage and disadvantage for each of both of them. Hey. Yes, you are near my phone, be brave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But there's an advantage and disadvantage for each of them. For the 2.4 gigahertz, it actually has a longer range, so you can be in two, three rooms ahead and still the signal won't cut. But then it can't transmit as much data per time, so it's not as fast as you want it to be. But on the 5 gigahertz, it's very fast, but then it's a limited range. So if you go two, three rooms ahead, you won't be able to get the signal. So you can take note of this when you are doing hotspot and you want to share to a friend who is very close by, you can use the 5 gigahertz frequency instead so you can send more data per second because the person is close to you. However, if the person is far away, you can use the 2.4 gigahertz per second, which might slow you down, but it has a better range and you'll be able to transmit your data seamlessly. So I'm going to mention two useful things that Wi-Fi is being used for today. I'm sure most of you know that Wi-Fi routers actually provide internet to us. So a wireless router actually uses the Wi-Fi protocol to connect multiple devices to a mobile network provider. So it's like the middleman, it connects many devices to itself and then sends that data to MTN server, Airtel server, whatever network you use. And so that's how it works. That's interesting and all, but that's not my favorite use of Wi-Fi actually. One very useful use of Wi-Fi is actually to send data from one device to another. Now, I'm sure most of you have heard of Zender, and Zender uses the same Wi-Fi protocol to send information from one device to another, more or less. And so when you have one device, you put on your hotspot, it connects to it, then Zender uses this Wi-Fi protocol to send data from your device to his or her device. And because Wi-Fi has a huge bandwidth, it can send data fast at about 9 megabits per second. Also, you can use your router to also send data using an app I like to use, which is called Feem. Using Feem, you can send the data through your router to the other device that you actually want to let you receive it. Although that's longer and you probably get a lower bandwidth, if your Wi-Fi router is good enough, you'll probably be able to send it and it will have a lot of misconnections. So let's come to Bluetooth. Bluetooth is actually similar to Wi-Fi in a lot of ways and very different in other ways. Bluetooth actually uses low power radio waves to transmit data information from one device to another, provided it has a Bluetooth chip inside both of them. But with Bluetooth, it, has, it uses a low power consumption and it also doesn't have a lot of range and bandwidth, so you can't send data fast. Back in the day, if you remember, when you used to use Symbian phones, you can send one song to, from one person to another using Bluetooth and one song could take about 10 minutes to send. I don't miss those days, although it gives me nostalgic memories. However, the advantage of Bluetooth is that because it's low power, it's actually useful for a lot of scenarios, especially in IoT. For instance, you have a computer and you want to connect a wireless mouse to it. It would be better to use 
Bluetooth technology instead of Wi-Fi technology because with Bluetooth technology it won't it will last longer because it uses low power and it won't draw the battery so much from the mouse's battery or whatever you use to charge the mouse. However, with Wi-Fi, if you're supposed to connect the mouse to Wi-Fi, yes, it might be faster, but then it will be so power consuming that you probably regret ever using that. So Bluetooth was seen as a better option. And to be honest, sending sensor values from your mouse or your keyboard to the computer actually doesn't demand a lot of bandwidth. So it was chosen as a better alternative to Wi-Fi. One very common use of Bluetooth today is actually using Bluetooth headphones or earphones or AirPods or whatever you like to call them. So using the Bluetooth protocol is used to send sound information from your phone to wirelessly to your AirPods or your wireless earbuds and then you can hear the sound which is also one way of using it. Bluetooth Low Energy was discovered recently and that's even a more efficient way to transfer information over Bluetooth and that's about 10 times way less power consuming than its counterpart Wi-Fi. So one fun fact for you is that the name Bluetooth actually came from the Viking Danish king whose name was Harald Blatand. I'm sure I've butchered the name but we move. His name was Harold Blatan and the people who developed Bluetooth decided to name it after him. And then the symbol for Bluetooth is actually the alphabetical representation of his name in his native language. I'm not even going to try to mention it, I'll probably butcher it again. But yeah, that's your fun fact for you. So let's move on to the less common and less popular form of wireless communication, NFC. NFC is the short form for near field communication and for this time it's actually the short official form of NFC, near field communication. And in more ways than one, it's actually the worst form of Bluetooth. But as the advantage of Bluetooth shown, if you have any wireless communication technology that actually transfers over short distances, it's most likely that it's going to consume less power. And that's the same for NFC. NFC consumes way less power than Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And because of that, if you are using NFC to transfer files from one device to another, it's actually going to be very, very slow. But then for its use case scenario, it actually serves its purpose. It's mostly used in the e-banking world and e-commerce world where there's a lot of e-transactions and you can use to tap each other to make payments. But then I would like to suggest one thing if the appropriate authorities are watching this. Now, I don't see NFC being used in this part of the world as often, but I had an idea. Imagine if you go to a vendor and you actually Make, need to make payments you don't need to wait for the vendor to mention the number just take your phone open the app and tap on their their nfc tab and automatically it registers on your phone with their number and you just have to confirm your payment by typing in your pin and that's it so it's like a two-step method you open your phone open nfc and tap onto their nfc tag and automatically the number registers on your phone and you type your mumba money pin to confirm it won't this be simple a few years ago i read that mtn was implementing something similar i don't know why it didn't take off but i think it would be an excellent use of nfc since almost every phone nowadays has nfc and it's actually a requirement if you have a phone that has have nfc uh, i'm going to suggest that you throw it away because charlie yeah Almost every phone should have NFC in 2021. But then NFC is very useful for such cases. And if MTN or Ed or any other mobile communication uh, provider is actually watching this, they could also look into it and see whether it's also a suitable alternative because I'm actually tired of typing people's numbers twice to confirm. If you could just tap on somewhere and then once and for all, the number is confirmed on your phone and just type your pain to move on. I think it would be an excellent replacement for the current USSD method we are using today. But unfortunately, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed our tech fundamentals on wireless communication technologies. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you share with friends and family and let's build a tech vest Africa together. Please make sure you follow us on Twitter and on Instagram as we share our updates on modern and recent technology news that come your way. I'm Michelle Manuel, welcome to Tech Havens. Until you next time, very, very soon. Bye-bye.